Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here on behalf of hashtag ArtJoyOfSharing or AJOS. And this month for the hop, it is Mix Media Madness. You can do hashtag Mix Media Madness. And I'm going to do some metal embossing on this stencil right here. I want to, I think I'm going to try. Mm, I think I'm going to try this one right here, the sunflowers. I want to see how it'll come out. Um, I went through my drawer. I don't have a lot of metal stuff left. I mean, I tried to whoops, use it all up, and I'm trying not to replace a lot of stuff that isn't just essential to living. Let's see. Let me turn this over to see how close this comes to the edge. That's too close for me. Okay, so I won't be using this tinned copper here. It's copper on one side and it's tin. It's just coated with the copper, very thin layer. And I don't want to use this up, so. Um, both my parents are deceased and I'm still finding things that were came out of my parents' garage when we cleaned the stuff out. These are two pieces of real copper. I don't know what my dad was doing with these, but they were in his stuff in his workbench. So I thought I would use this. So, um, I need a soft surface, and then you need a hard surface. I'm going to lay this down here, and I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take some tape and tape it down and then flip it over and work on the other side. It's very bright. I'm sorry. <coughs> we actually have sunshine. So I'm very happy because it's thawing out a lot of people's water pipes that are just miserable with no water. All right, let me go get the tape. Okay, so blue painter's tape. I'm going to take this. And I, I'm, on, I'm not going to tape it onto here. I'm just going to tape my... Um, sunflower stencil here onto the board because I don't want it to slip around while I'm working on it. I've had that happen plenty of times in the past. All right, so a while, in, I think in past videos, I explained that I bought this um, metal. And, wow, it really is bright. Let me turn this off. Oh, that didn't help at all. <laughs> this um, metal embossing tips, I think this is from Walnut Creek. Walnut Hollow. Man, I did it wrong again. <laughs> okay, so I just, I don't, I didn't want the packaging and this took up less room. And so I wouldn't lose the tips. I just put it in this metal screw top jar. A little, And then the tips, it's two-sided. So the tips screw in one side and they screw in the other. So, you know, if you have to flip back and forth, you don't spend all your time unscrewing it constantly. All right, so let's see. I think this is the smallest tip I have to do the outlining with. Uh, let's see. Nope. There's a Teflon piece in here. So I might outline with the Teflon piece and save this one for later. So let me put that in there. Let me screw this in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and take the Teflon tool and outline inside the stencil. This is another way that you can use stencils. Stencils don't always have to be about paint or ink. They can be about lots of other things. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today is there's lots of ways to use your tools more ways than one. And I really enjoy using my stencils for other stuff besides stenciling because honestly, I'm not really a great stenciler. I've seen people that do a fantastic job with the jelly plates and all that stuff and that is not me. So I use it for what interests me and it's almost anything but jelly plates. <laughs> I love jelly plates, don't get me wrong, I love my jelly prints, but I'm not great at it. 
And I guess I really don't need to be. But looking at other people's stuff, I think, well, maybe I need to learn a new skill with it. And I think, eh, never mind. <laughs> all right, so all I'm doing is just going through here and I am scoring it because I, when I flip it over, it should whoops, pop out a little bit on the other side so that I can work with it. So in the very beginning, if you're a beginner and you can't draw, like I draw things, but you know, this is easier than starting from scratch. Why reinvent the wheel? Take a stencil you already have. Let me lay, make this lay down. Take a stencil you already have and tape it down and use it. And you don't need these um, tools. I have some Martha Stewart embossing tools that have balls on the end of them, end of them that would work just fine. Because that's what I started with. In the very beginning, I started with the Martha Stewart's stylists. And I think there's three, so that gives you six different tips because they're double-sided. And that's what I used. There's something very satisfying about tracing things. I don't know. All right, so let me look, pull this up and see if I got all of it. I got this one. Did this little bitty one, this one. I'm looking, I'm missing one. Yep, missing one right here. What else am I missing? Da, 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 da. That's done. That's done. That's the nice thing about putting it on a hinge is you can go back and forth. Oops, see, I'm missing all these guys. Um, you can go back and forth and take a look to see what you've done and what needs to be done, what you forgot. And I forgot these two right here. Um, this one's a little sloppy, so let's redo that one. And then I look like I didn't do very well on that one. And then make sure there's petals all the way around. All the, and the impression on them is not that great. This is um, real copper. This is not the tin stuff. This is copper. Not hobby copper. This is real copper. All right. There we go. Can you see it? No, probably not. It's so bright in here. I'm sorry. How's that? Oh, that's better. There you go. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the tape off. And I'm going to flip it over. That is some very heavy copper. All right, so there is a tool in here that is rounded, but it's too big for this. So let's see. I don't think there's anything in here I want to use on this, except I will go around it with this. This will cause the other stuff to kind of pop up. You just go around it. And see, it's already... Let me do it this way. You can see there's already a difference, and it's not looking as flat as it did. Because now I'm just tracing around all the things that I went around in the stencil. All right, let me fast forward through this part and you can watch it. I'll just put it on two times because, you know, I only want to make a 20 minute video. I don't want to make you guys go to sleep. <laughs>
Okay, so this is one foam sheet that still has the sticky back on it. I'll probably never use it for anything except for this because it looks very unsightly. This one I glued, or what I did is I took the paper off the back of these and put two um, backs together. So I have two fronts, but this is thicker than this one. So this will give it more cushion. And hopefully it will help the other parts pop out more. So let's. All right, so I have two different things here. I have um, Delroni's Black, that says pearlescent, and, or Bombay India Ink, one of the two. Doesn't make any difference which one you use. They're gonna do the exact same thing. If you can get them out of the, <laughs> if you can get them out of the jars. You can take a makeup sponge or a towel. Smear it all over the copper. I think I'd like a little more. Let me get a makeup sponge because this is shredding. Here's my little container of makeup sponges. Let me scoot some of this stuff out of the way here. And frankly, I don't really care what's on the end of the sponge because it's irrelevant to what I'm doing. All right, so let me put more on here. Well, come on, eyedropper, do your thing. There we go. <gasps> We're cooking with gas now. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna really rub it on here good. Make sure it's all the cracks and crevices and scratches, indentations and pokey uppy parties, parts. I don't really want my fingerprints on here. <laughs> Not really. Okay, so then the next part is patience. Well, maybe not. Okay, so another thing that you can that you need to do this use is um, you can use a nail file from Dollar Tree. They use on acrylic nails, but use the soft side, or you can go to your local hardware store and buy one of these sponge backed. Um, Sandpapers, lights. Okay. I was putting together my video for this, trying to piece the parts together. There's like 50,000 starts and stops. Um, and then I remembered about something that I didn't even talk about in the video, and these are paper stylist. And these things were great for doing this and not leaving a whole bunch of lines in your stuff. Not to mention the fact that you can take it and gently use this paper stylus to tamp down the places that you want on here. I don't know what I was thinking when I was filming that I completely forgot these and the silly things were sitting on my desk. So this can be made more flat. You see the difference between this side and this side. Now the sun comes out. Son of a gun. <laughs> okay, so it's really bright. I'm sorry. Um, so I, I forgot about this. So you can take this and kind of lay it on its side like this. I bought these on Amazon K 
case somebody goes looking for them. And I think they're called paper stylus or paper paper stubs or stumps. I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. It would have saved a lot of wrinkles here, huh? All right, that's that side. Um, you can also use a Q-tip, but you can't put as much pressure on a Q-tip as you can on this. These are pretty sturdy things. I've had these a long time. All right, so for all the inner places that you can't reach, I mean, they come in like a bazillion sizes. So if you can't get in between anything with some of the others, you can get the smaller ones and use the smaller ones to outline. You don't have to use that metal tool. You can use these. These work great. Let me see, I need a more pointy one. Here, let's do this one. These things work really great for, oh, except for when they mash in. Okay, so that one's not a good one for that. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. All right, here we go. And then if you see you've dented in anything on one side, you can go back and fix it on the other side. You can make it pop out. And something else I forgot to talk about was how to finish this silly thing. I don't know what I was thinking. What it was is I was hungry and I was in a hurry to go eat lunch. I should have stopped and started and done a little better with what I was telling you guys. All right, so you can go around it with the stump. And then this next part is really important. As soon as I find it, here it is. All right, this is Mod, po Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. You don't want this stuff to cave in. So what you do is you fill in all these places and you let it sit overnight and it hardens so that the parts that protrude, the ones that are really deep, will not cave in. Like if this goes on the front of the book and I put it in a bookcase, it's going to take a lot of friction on the parts that pop up. I don't want them to sink in. I want them to stand out. You can put it in each one of these little things to give them some oomph. Um, I have tried candle wax. I have tried, um, what else? Oh, um, shoot, what's that stuff called? Uh, beep, 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 spackle. I've tried spackle. I've tried all kinds of things, but I have found that this works the best. Um, I don't want to use my glossy, was it glossy accents? Is it, oh, it is? Yes. Glossy accents to do that because, you know, I just, I would like to use that stuff for something else. But it will do the same thing as this. If you, if you don't have this, then the glossy accents will do the exact same thing. It will harden inside the spot so that your stuff doesn't cave in. This is going to take a while to dry because it's kind of cold in the house right now. All right, so you just let this dry overnight and when it's dry, you will have um, a dimensional object that's going to stay dimensional. I'm gonna kind of push it this way. So I'm gonna let it sit overnight and dry and then I'll be back tomorrow to show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so it's been more than 24 hours since I squirted the um, Mod Podge Dimensional Magic into the back of this. Um, and let me explain what happened. I squirted the back and filled it up so you can't see it anymore because it's clear. It does just exactly what Crystal... Oh my word, I can never... Glossy accents, boy. Um, it does the exact same thing. It has dimension, it dries clear, and then shows whatever's underneath it. Same stuff. Um, but after the first couple of hours, it settled. It like made 
you know, it sunk down. So then I loaded it up again with another squirting. <laughs> and it looks, look at that, it looks pretty good. It's pretty flat, even it. So now let me see if I can show you. All right, so there's, this is the reason why you do it. Let's look, look, watch this. I can mash on this. And yes, it did make a little tiny dent, but it's still good. And with normal wear and tear, stuff is going to cave in a little bit. But this really did a good job. I'm very, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Now, once you do it like this, uh, I don't know what everybody else does, but I store these away in a drawer in a box. And then when I need an idea for the front cover of a book, I will dig through and see if there's anything in there that would make a good cover to a book. Um, let's see, what else was I going to tell you? About? Okay, so book. So last year, oh, sorry about the glare. Last, last year, I did this. I think this is a cereal box of some sort. And I covered it with heavy-duty household foil. Then I took little pieces of foil tape and leftover scrap pieces, wrapped them around little squares of cardboard. Then I doodled on them or I wrapped... Like this one is really um, some kind of a, uh, what do you call them? Some kind of a gear. I'm sorry, the glare off the metal is just unbelievable. Anyway, so I wrapped that up in foil and then took a Q-tip and rolled it around on there till I got it to really sink in. Same with this one. I did the little piece of cardboard underneath, covered it up with a piece of foil, didn't want to spend a lot of money, so I covered the base up with the foil, and then I put the money in covering this um, this right here that I had in the drawer, and it worked out perfect. This really is a key. I did regular household foil again. This is the heavy-duty, you know, use it and cover your grill foil. And there is a, uh, I think it's a blue or purple key that was some kind of a gadget that came in a, uh, I don't know, what do you call them? I can't remember. Anyway, so this came in a $1 packet of a whole bunch of little colored keys that were pink and blue and green, and I never used them, so I put it in there, and then I did the foil over it. I made sure you start from the center first. You lay the foil over it, and you don't fasten it down. Then you go over the key very gently. Then you have to go around here, and then whatever is left over, you tuck underneath. Um, this is a stamp by um, Gina Ahrens, Ahrens. And I took the stamp, I stamped it on a piece of foil, and then I gouged it, or I kind of went around it with, you know, the Martha Stewart stylist, and wrapped it around a piece of... Uh, cardboard, the foil around the cardboard, and popped it up with pop dots. This is just, uh, this I think is one of those Tim Holtz uh, chipboard type things, and I did it in just the regular household foil. Now, I turned this stuff black by using black shoe polish. So, I just went over each one of these at a time. First I did the foil. After I put it on there, I did the foil in the black and made it look all textury. Then I did each one of these in some kind of metal foil. Either it was foil from the kitchen or it was uh, leftover foil from something else. And just mashed it down on there, used the stylus, doodled on it, and glued it on and then like and put some of them with pop dots on there. So this is the front of a book. Well, it will be someday when I get around to it. <laughs> okay, so other things that I've done in the past. I made this, and I showed this on Instagram, and one of the girls that knows me from my knitting days when I lived in Virginia said, wow, that looks like a really good piece of chocolate. I went, uh, it's not food. <laughs> so um, I did this one with the tinned copper. I did the copper side, then I took the sandpaper and scuffed up this and only did the tops of the little bumps that I did in there. It took a long time to stick a bump in every one of those little squares I made. 
but I like the way it looks. And again, it's just on some kind of chipboard. And then when you put it on the chipboard, it's all spread out. You cut just like you do when you make envelopes or you cover books. You make a little slit. And then you take it and you roll it over when you put glue on it. I use Yes Glue on this. Yes or E6000, I can't remember which one. So I, you take it and you roll it over and mash it flat down. And then you turn it over and smooth it down. And you do all it. Now the corners are really sharp on these, so you have to be very careful. I did not do the tucking and everything because, you know, I did this last year while I was trying to teach myself how to do it. And so I really didn't care about how the corners looked. It'll be on the top of a book somewhere or, you know, whatever. So it's going in the box. Um, this was a stencil. I think this was a uh, crafter's workshop stencil. And I just did the stencil the same exact way that I did my, my stencil here with the uh, sunflowers. Exact same thing. Uh, tinned copper. There's the copper on the back. And copper, this was the tin side. I decided I wanted the tin side. Well, nope, that was copper side. And I ended up scuffing it all off with sandpaper. But I like the way this looks. I think this is a 4x4. Four four. And again, you roll around the back, you glue it, you try to tuck in, and be, you have to be careful because you can cut yourself with this stuff. It's not, it's not something that little kids should be fooling with without some kind of supervision. If you're going to teach them to do this, use regular household foil and heavy-duty foil. That's the best, least expensive way to do it. Or you can go to the hardware store and buy a roll of plumber's tape. Oh, with everybody having busted pipes, probably now is not the good time to go get the plumber's tape. And then the last one is also a stencil. Um, I think this might be another crafter's workshop. And there is a Cheerio box. I'm not kidding. I really do use food boxes a lot. And this is really heavy. These are all filled in. And I can't remember. This might be spackling in here. One of them I used wax and the wax popped out. So I quit uh, candle wax. We light the candle and drip it into the holes or the indentations and then overnight it dries like you know like this did the only thing is is if you moved it around do anything <laughs> the wax gets cold and it goes bing and it pops out the back so probably not a good idea to use candle wax buy the um, glossy accents or the mod podge dimensional magic or use spackle i think when i did this one this one probably it's really hard yeah i think i use spackle in this one so there's examples of what you can do with a stencil besides a jelly plate. All right, everybody, thanks for coming by. And